In this video, we're going to look at solving problems involving limits of accuracy. Before you watch this video, I'd highly recommend you watch my video on limits of accuracy because it'll explain what the lower and upper bounds are. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to look at different scenarios. So, if we're adding a and b, subtracting a, b from a, times a and b, and dividing a by b, how do you get the greatest possible answer and the least possible answer by using the upper and lower bound? So, if you were going to add two numbers together and you want the biggest possible answer, you would want to add the two upper bounds. So you're going to do a max plus b max. That would give you the highest possible answer for a plus b. The lowest possible answer, obviously, you'd want to add the two lower bounds. So you do a min plus b min. So if you add the two smallest possible bounds, or the two lower bounds for them, then that would give you the lowest answer. Okay, if you were going to subtract them, well, if you wanted the biggest answer, you would want the upper bound for A and the lower bound for B, because you'd be taking a small number away from a large number, and that would give you the biggest possible answer. So it would be A max minus B min. Okay, whenever you're dealing with the numbers, it makes it it's actually quite easy to look at that and understand it with the, from the numbers you've got in front of you. But if you wanted the biggest possible answer, you'd want to take the smallest number away from the biggest answer. Okay, let's uh, say now we want to find the least answer. So we want to find the lowest possible answer for a subtract b. Well, then you would want to use the minimum for a and the maximum for b. So you would do a min subtract b max. Because then that would give you the smallest difference between them. If you're going to multiply them, that's quite straightforward. If you want the biggest answer, you would times the two upper bounds. So you're going to do a max times b max. Because whenever you're multiplying, you would want to multiply the two biggest numbers to get the biggest answer. Uh, and likewise, or for then, likewise for the least answer, you would want to multiply the two smallest or the two lower bounds for these. So you'd want to do m min times b min. Okay, and then dividing, it's similar to uh, to subtraction. Uh, for the biggest answer, you'd want to divide the biggest number by the smallest number. So the upper bound for a by the lower bound for b, because then that would fit in more times. So you would do a max divided by b min. And likewise, for the smallest answer, you'd want to have the lower bound for a and the upper bound for b, because then that would give you the smallest answer. So that's going to be a min divided by b max. Now this makes sense, I believe. I don't actually sit down and learn these as such. I just sort of go and look at the numbers involved in the questions. I write the upper bound and lower bound for each of the different numbers, and then I work out what I would need to do. So let's have a look at some examples. Okay, so here we've got a picture of a rectangle, and it says both sides are measured to the nearest centimetre. Work out the smallest possible area. So if you want to work out the smallest possible area, first of all, let's start off with the length. So the length is eight centimetres. That means that the lower bound, because it's to the nearest centimetre, the lower bound would be 7.5 centimetres. And the upper bound would be equal to 8.5 centimetres. So that's for the length. They're the two bounds, okay? 7.5 centimetres and 8.5 centimetres. The width is 3 centimetres. So the width, the lower bound would be equal to 2.5 centimetres. And the upper bound would be equal to 3.5 centimetres. So just write those down, 2.5 centimetres for the lower bound, and the upper bound 3.5 centimetres. Okay, now obviously you want to work out the smallest possible area. So for the smallest possible area, you're going to multiply the two smallest values. So you're going to multiply the two lower bounds together. So you'd want to do 7.5 times 2.5. And when you do that, 7.5 times 2.5, 7.5 times 2.5, you get an answer of 18.75. So the lowest, uh, smallest possible area would be 18.75 centimetres squared. Kate is 151 centimetres tall to the nearest centimetre. Donna is 144 centimetres tall to the nearest centimetre. Work out the greatest possible difference in their heights. So, for Kate, the lower bound to the nearest centimetre is going to be 100... Well, the lower bound is going to be 150.5 centimetres. Her upper bound would be 151.5 centimetres. Donna, 144 to the nearest centimetre, so her lower bound would be 143.5 centimetres. And her upper bound would be 144.5 centimetres.
Now the question says work out the greatest possible difference between their heights. So difference means we're going to subtract them and we want the biggest possible answer. Well if we want the biggest possible answer we're going to want to uh, you choose the biggest number subtract the smallest number because then that would give us the biggest possible answer. So we would do 151.5 subtract 143.5 and then that would give you 8 centimetres. A boy runs 100 metres measured to the nearest 10 metres. He takes 13 seconds to the nearest second. What is his fastest possible average speed? So speed is equal to distance divided by time. So that means we're going to want to do the distance divided by the time. So let's choose the or let's find out the bounds for those. So he runs 100 metres to the nearest 10 metres. That means that his lower bound is going to be 95 metres. So that's the shortest possible distance he could run. And the largest possible distance he could run would be 105 metres. Uh, it took him 13 seconds, so the lower bound would be 12.5 seconds, and the upper bound would be 13.5 seconds. Now, if we want the fastest possible speed, we're going to want to know the, uh, the largest possible value for s. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to divide the largest number by the smallest number, because that gives us the biggest possible answer to the division. So we're going to do the largest number, 105 metres, divided by the smallest time, because obviously I give you the biggest uh, speed or the largest speed if you do a really if you do a longer distance in a shorter time that would mean mean that you're going faster. So you're going to do 105 divided by 12.5. So we'll do that. So 105 divided by 12.5, and we get 8.4. So the fastest possible speed is 8.4 meters per second. A van can safely hold 820 kilograms correct to two significant figures. Barrels weigh 80 kilograms measured to the nearest 10 kilograms. Can the van hold 10 barrels? So, first of all, let's consider the weight that the van can hold. So the van can hold 820 to two significant figures. That means the lower bound will be 815 kilograms. And the upper bound will be 825 kilograms. The barrels are 80 kilograms measured to the nearest 10, so that means that the lower bound would be 75 kilograms and the upper bound would be 85 kilograms for each barrel. Can the, vo uh, the van hold 10 barrels? So multiplying by 10, the upper bound, or multiplying by 10, the upper bound times 10 would be 850 kilograms and the lower bound times 10 would be 750 kilograms. So what we've just noticed is that the barrels, the 10 barrels, could potentially weigh up to 850 kilograms, whereas the van can only safely hold somewhere in the region between 815 and 825 kilograms. So obviously, no, the van can't hold, well, it could maybe hold 10 barrels if the barrels were actually towards the latter end, but potentially the barrels may weigh up to 850 kilograms, so obviously it's not safe to try to do 10 barrels. So you'd write that down in a couple of sentences.